All right, everyone, today on Plant-Based Kidney Health, we are talking about proteinuria or protein in the urine for people with kidney disease. So Dr. Hashmi, what is proteinuria? What is considered normal protein to be found in the urine and what's abnormal? So remember, when we, when we talk about protein in the urine, sometimes you'll see people say the word albuminuria, and sometimes you'll see them say proteinuria. Essentially, normally, all of us spill a certain amount of protein. So protein is all the different types of proteins and albumin is just one type. So when you look at all the different types, usually normal excretion is less than about 150 milligrams per day. And when you start to think about normal albumin excretion, you're talking about less than 20 milligrams per day. So once again, less than 150, less than 20. So then when we start to get into this idea of what's considered to be abnormal, well, when you start to look at albumin, which is one specific type of protein, if it's essentially higher than 30 milligrams per day, that's considered abnormal. And so we'll start to say that if it's moderately increased, you'll see the terms 30 to about 300 milligrams per day. But if it's significant or it's severe, then it's higher than 300 milligrams of albumin per day. And so that becomes important to understand simply because as we're talking about these numbers, it's all about being over 30 on the albumin. With proteinuria, proteinuria is a little bit higher. We said normal was around 150. If you're over 200, that's not normal. And when we start to get into the goals of treatment, people can have several thousand milligrams of protein in the urine. And our goal is, is what we consider success is if we get that number down by 50%, that's considered success. And the lowest risk for kidney disease progression is if we bring the protein in the urine less than a thousand. So if we get to less than a thousand, let's say you were three, four, five thousand, we got you less than a thousand. That's awesome. And in a perfect world, we want to get you less than 500. But for protein in the urine, just remember, we're trying to bring you back by 50% and even better to less than a thousand. Please, like, can you talk a little bit more about the testing, the dipstick versus uh, mm -hmm. uh, urine collection? And if someone has, they're only being, they have kidney disease, they're only being tested for protein in the urine, should they be also being checked for the albumin? And is that done on a, a dipstick or does that have to be done with a urine collection? Right. So when it comes to testing, we can do a dipstick, which will just detect if there's protein in the urine, but it might miss certain types of protein, which are light chains. So what, when we talk about protein in the urine, the, the important part of this is to understand that there's really four types or four places where the damage is occurring. So one is the glomerulus itself, and we call that glomerular protein in the urine of proteinuria. And that's things like, for example, high blood pressure, diabetes will cause glomerular protein. Then there's things like tubular. And tubular is more like you got some heavy metals, you got um, sort of what we call like a uh, AIN, which is an allergic interstitial inflammation reaction, or certain medications will cause tubular. But the stuff that we sometimes miss on just um, dipstick is things like overflow proteinuria, which is specifically light chains. And why do we care? Because those are very serious diseases like multiple myeloma. And then there's essentially stuff that happens after the kidneys, which is post renal. And that can be infections like urinary tract infections. It could be kidney stones. And we want to know because if you got protein and you have a kidney stone, we don't need to treat you with all these crazy drugs because of the fact that all it is is the stone itself leading to it or the UTI. And when it's treated, it'll be fixed. So when it comes to testing, spot your analysis is sort of the first thing, right? You can go to the next step, which is doing a urine albumin or what we call a urine microalbumin to creatinine ratio. Remember, that's just one type of protein. We can do a urine protein to creatinine. Now, these are all spot. I mean, you just go into the doctor's office. They say, okay, Mrs. Smith, go give a urine sample. You give it and we have it. Best time to do these tests is first thing in the morning. But then 
in order for us to be a little bit more precise and accurate, we do a 24-hour urine collection. And that's the one that patients don't like because you have to refrigerate it and you essentially start in the morning, you use the restroom like you normally do. And after that, every time you pee for the next 24 hours, you collect it and you turn that in. So those are all of the ways. And in terms of when should you do microalbumin, when should you do total protein, the, the thing is, is the most important component of that is whatever you, you're sort of doing, try to stick to it. In my patients, I test both. And so I'll just go ahead and order both because you're peeing anyways, and the test is so simple to do. So I just end up doing both and I can track it better. And it's a great way to educate my patients on what's going on. But I do test urine protein, which is a total protein. Got it. And so you talked a little bit about obviously what the different things that can cause protein um, to leak into the urine, but overall, like with just in general with kidney disease, what is happening when someone has kidney disease and they have protein spilling into their urine? Yeah. So you're basically destroying the membrane. There's a membrane and you're destroying it. If you're talking in the glomerulus, that's what's happening. If you're talking beyond the glomerulus in the tubules, you can't reabsorb that protein that's going into the tubule. So you're spilling it. In overflow, it just means that those light chains are so much that they're overwhelming the kidney's ability to be able to hold them back. That's why that's happening. And infections or inflammations can make all your little tiny holes much, much bigger so protein can spill through. But essentially, it's damage at the level of the kidney, and that's resulting in the excess spillage. We all have a little bit of protein in the urine. That's completely normal. So you're not looking for zero because you're always going to have it. But if you're talking about protein in the urine, then you're looking for less than 150 milligrams per day. Got it. And outside of then testing your urine, what we're always asked about is any physical signs that you might have protein in the urine. And the thing, you know, of course, what we're always asked is if I have bubbles in, um, you know, the toilet when I pee, does that mean that there's protein present? You know, this is the hardest, hardest thing to, to answer because everybody has bubbles. But the formal definition of bubbles is really, are they getting worse? Or are they persistent? And so if that's happening, then you definitely want to go and get it checked out. So in other words, the persistence, I don't know if persistency is a word, but the more persistent the bubbles are, that's number one. And number two is if you see that the bubbles in the urine are actually getting worse, that's another very important thing. So those, you know, if you have bubbles one time, not a big deal. You don't want to freak out over it and go get it tested. And even if you get it tested and you're young and healthy, otherwise, you can do a dipstick to look for protein in the urine. And sometimes when there's blood, you'll see the urine dipstick showing some protein in the urine. That doesn't necessarily mean you have, oh my God, a kidney disease you need to be worried about. So if you're somebody who's a diabetic, you have blood pressure that hasn't been controlled. Then if you got bubbly urine, and it's a, a decent amount of bubbles, then yes, you should absolutely get it checked because if you have diabetes, your risk of having diabetic nephropathy is very high. Right. And I think that's part of, or it should be part of screening for people with diabetes, even if they don't have kidney disease, um, checking, you know, yeah, you're doing blood work um, at least annually, but also doing your analysis to check for protein in the urine um, to obviously catch it before it becomes to be a lot or to make sure it's not abnormal. So I think we're the, those are all the questions that we had on protein in the urine and kind of the testing around that. We're going to do another episode on how to lower protein in the urine. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you guys all next time. Thanks guys.